right, we should be good to go. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Welcome to the SNMA Sewing Seas session, where we talk about managing relationships and friendships in medicine. And we shall discuss with our two panelists today. Um, that would be, um, I'll let them introduce themselves first, and then we will get into the questions. And then, yes, um, does that sound good for you two? That sounds good. And I will let you go first. Ladies first. Unfortunately, for you. Um, thank you once again for the host of this platform. I'm really excited to be here. So my name is Favor Anthony. I'm a fourth year medical student from All Saints University located in Dominica. I'm currently doing my anesthesiology rotation. Um, my specialty of interest is pediatric surgery. But then again, I'm keeping an open mind for transplant, surgical oncology, but all things surgery. A fun fact about myself, oh my Lord. <laughs> I um I mean as much as I love being social, I also really enjoy like when I'm inside just being on my own. Um, I really do con love to connect with people of different backgrounds and ethnicities, and I work with kids. I I guess I've given so many fun facts, but yeah. I like those facts. Uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Lovanani. I go by he him and all the male specific gender pronouns. Uh, my specialty is emergency medicine. Uh, I practice out of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and a fun fact about me is like, I really like sports. I think I pay attention to every sport, like just enough to keep up and have casual conversation. So this Sunday is a really big Sunday. It was big at first because of the Super Bowl. Now Nigeria won and is entering the finals for the half hand, right? So the Super Eagles are out there at two o'clock, Super Bowl at five o'clock. It's gonna be a very, very big Sunday. Okay, yes, yes. I'm actually looking forward to that because um, I'm from California and the 49ers are going to make a huge debut this weekend. <laughs> yes, thank you for sharing that. All right, with that, we will go into the session today. So starting off, um, being an adult and then making friends and just relationships is hard. However, being in medicine and maintaining relationships can be even harder, as many argue. Um, we would like to hear from our panelists today as they discuss their experiences and how to nurture these relationships, as well as create long-term relationships when people progress through the career of medicine. All right, so we will start with our first question for today. I will just read it off here. So um, regarding relationships, what was it like to experience one while working or studying in medicine? It can be from any time in your career, such as in med school, maybe even in college during your pre-medical career. And um, yes, um, uh, whoever would like to share their first relationship experience um, may feel free to go. You introduce first, so I'll tackle the question first and then we'll just go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, so relationships have many monikers. Um, I'm gonna use the one that's easiest for me to use um, and I will use a romantic relationship in this case. So for me, uh, I actually started dating uh, my now wife uh, in med school during our first year. Um, so it was hard enough to balance relationship as a med student. Now there are two med students balancing relationship. However, being at the same school in the same class made it kind of easy, right? Because then we can study together. Our off days are all aligned. I already knew what her schedule was like. So it wasn't like we had to make stuff up. Um, so that actually made it easier than not dating a med student. Um, if someone's in a different school, different place, and I did have colleagues who did that, I definitely watched. Um, and there was definitely a lot of juggling. Calendars had to be used. Um, you had to make sure everyone knew those off weekends ahead of time. Um, but for me, that was one thing I can say was actually easier in life, um, dating someone in medicine at the school I was at, at the level that I was at. For me, I'm going to speak from the friendship level. I would say from I have over the years learned how to become a better friend and just develop my relationships better because I started med school pretty young, 2014. I was 16 at the time. I just went straight from um, high school into the pre-med program and then into the MD program. And so at the time, I really was not looking for friends at all. So I wasn't even trying to be a friend. And then eventually I had to learn how to start making friendships and connections and realize that being an island is not the best thing at all. 
But after med school, because a lot of us left the island and even after the hurricane happened, so it, mo most of my friends are in different parts of the world. I would say that I've had to do long distance friendship for the longest time now. So it's hard a lot of times, but I've learned how to prioritize what is important to me in terms of being able to text or call. Even when I'm trying to do some work, I learn how to multitask with trying to, you know, video chat with my parents back in Nigeria. So it has been not the easiest thing to figure out. And there are times I've, you know, had to also communicate that with certain friends where when you text them, it takes them two weeks to respond. <laughs> And you wonder what is happening. Yeah. And I've had to say, what, what is going on in your life? Exactly. So there are some that have been very receptive to doing better at communicating. But the biggest thing is to be able to say that you need to be able to give yourself grace and other people grace as well. Because I've also had to compromise even the method of communication. There are people that may not be great texters, but maybe better at using in a voice note or a phone call. So it also depends on the person that you're working with. So it has, I mean, I'm not perfect, but I have gotten at least a better balance at that for now. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Right, I would say that um, one of the greatest um, vir virtues, I would say, in my opinion, is patience when it comes to building relationships because time is really important and it's really important that you just communicate and make sure that um, uh, you make space for a time when both of you can um, do stuff together and just hang out basically. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. Now um, I'll go into the next question, which actually does tackle time again. So um, this is more about the work side aspect of balancing it. So um, many people have heard a lot of things like med school is like drinking from um, a <laughs> hose of a fire hydrant. That's a pretty classic one. So how do you balance spending time in medicine versus with your partner, family, friends, or other people in your life? And um, Yes, we can start with um, uh, Dr. Anthony or um, uh, yes. That's fine. I would say being able to communicate your needs is super important. So if you really want to hear from that person more, you just have to tell them because I've realized and it sounds shocking that people don't re read minds. You think they do, but we don't read minds. And sometimes you may have a need that I'm not aware of. And I just don't know that you want me to text you more or call you more. So it's important for you to be able to communicate your needs with the person that you want to hear from more. There are times that it's also really challenging, especially for those that are outside of medicine, because the people that are in medicine, I don't think they really have that. Ex they have a different expectation of you. So if you're the type of person that has friends that are outside of medicine, you have to be aware that they may not have the same understanding as those in medicine. So that's where a lot of compromise has to come in, where you just have to communicate more with them than those that are in medicine who just, if you tell them that, if they go, if you go to them, they're like, yeah, you've been prepping for an exam there. You know, it's a different vibe that you get. But I will say it's really, really hard, especially when you're doing rotations or you have other works work outside of medicine that you're involved with. So I think it's just really being able to communicate. If you really want to hear from someone, just say it aloud. That is very true. One second. Uh, one of the things that I have found also with balancing, as you can hear the small human beings that I'm balancing right now, uh, give me 30 seconds and I will get you a graham cracker. And he's going to cry now. <laughs> he really wants a graham cracker. One second. All right. Well, I'm going to give him a graham cracker. So stop crying. That's my balance. Oh, no worries about that. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I definitely agree with communication, just going back to the topic. And um, yes, I would say that um, just balancing time. Yes, as we saw with Dr. Anani, it's very important that family comes first, especially when, um, when yes, one of your children get hungry. I'm assuming that was his child. <laughs> okay. All right, he, I need that. <laughs> he really wanted that graham cracker. He did not want to wait 30 seconds. So what I was going to say about the balancing is, one, uh, I find in medicine, I have to realize what is necessary, right? So everyone always says family first, which is very true. But your family needs a roof over their head. Your family needs to eat graham crackers, apparently. Um, and your family needs uh, to have things for sustenance. 
So if you don't work or you over prioritize family, you may not have the income you want, right? So the first thing I always realize is, okay, no matter what, I'm going to have to work X amount to make sure everyone's life is comfortable. So once I do that, then you realize that's the minimum amount of work you have to do. How much extra do you need to do? And that's where you usually can kind of like decide where you do or don't want to get into. Um, and then when it comes to family versus partner versus friends, again, I kind of have like a priority in my list, right? Wife and kids come first. So that first free Sunday, that first free uh, weekend back to back or golden weekend, as people call it, that's family. If I'm blessed with a second golden weekend, all right, let's try to squeeze some friends in there. Um, you know, you can get on a double date. You can get on that uh, Zoom call. You can get on that WhatsApp and just, you know, aim it at the ceiling and talk with everybody. Um, and those are things you can do there. And then some of your, you know, friends who are definitely good friends usually don't need as much, right? Like my guy friends need two hours on Call of Duty a month and we're guy friends for life. Um, so that's a simpler balance um, versus multiple, you know, dates or excursions or something like that. So you give everyone what they need to make it uh, through the month or make it through the time. And you make sure that you keep yourself whole as well. I was going to say, guys, you are from a different planet. <laughs> two, twice or just two hours in a month? What? <laughs> I mean, it, it's all you need. You can like get a good catch up, a good download. I, I prefer more than two hours. But if you get at least two hours, you don't get kicked out the group chat. That's all you need is two hours. Oh, that's especially true when your friends are across the country and doing different things like them. Um, some of my friends are doing masters, but in the meantime, I just graduated. So just hanging by trying to figure out stuff. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you for that, you two. Now we'll move on to the next question, which tackles more about um, just change and how, once again, the time has been a revolving factor around relationships. So. Um, over time, relationships can change and there are some new things that are um, thrown in our way or um, uh, just new challenges that come or a lot of things that we get to learn for the first time. So as relationships change over time, uh, how do you adapt to change or um, moving on as well? I think it's my turn to go first. Uh... I'll use one of the, I'll cheat and use one of my answers from the earlier question as well. It's nice when relationships change over time and other people's relationships are changing over time, right? So I'll continue to use my guy chat group as like a friend joke, right? When we were young and in college, it was every weekend together and then, you know, a joke every single day of the week, right? The chat had conversation at all times, right? Then that first guy gets married. It's like, all right, you know, he's out for the weekends but the other four of us are good, then everyone gets married. And then it's like, oh, okay, you got to juggle this weekend, that weekend, throw kids in there, and, and that's how you get down to just two hours. Um, but uh, similar to what Favor said, like it is the expectations that everyone sets earlier. So when everyone's like, hey, man, you're going to get married. Congrats. We love you. you know, we're all at the wedding. And then you, know, you just tell the wife, man, we need one raid night a month. Just give us one night. Um, you, know, you get kids. Um, before you have those sessions, you kind of like set the expectation early. Um, I will use myself as an example. I literally did this. I text the guy group, hey, y'all, wifey's on call tomorrow. I got the boys, but that means I'm free after 930. So anyone who wants to get on 930, I've given them an advance notice. They know. And that's different from just like, you know, walking and knocking on the dorm room back in the day. Like you want to go outside and get some pizza. Like that's how it evolves. Um, some people will say it matures. I say it just gets more busy. I was also going to say like scheduling a time to chat is, unf is unfortunately real <laughs> because everybody's time is very different and your free time is just, you can never tell. But I was going to say, um, this is a challenge even for me because I'm also learning how to learn. I'm, I'm learning how to let go of certain friendships because some friendships just change over time. And I used to be the type of person where I would just drop like a whole text message, letting you know how I feel and breaking up with you. And then as I got older, I realized that this is unnecessary because you just never know when you're going to need that person in the future. And I would also say treating everybody with respect is very important because the people that you initially connected with at first in your early stage of life, 
may not be the same people that you keep going down the line. And then the people that you least expect are now the ones who end up being there for you when you have certain challenges. So it's really important to keep that in mind that you have to just treat everyone with respect because you really never know when your season is going to change and when that person who you never used to talk to now becomes your closest friend. But it is something that you just, you have to navigate it. It's hard. It's like, tr I always do trial and error with my friendships. I'm like, if this works, great. If it doesn't, I know not to try the next time. But also I realized that even talking on the phone is very different from in person. Because I remember one of my friends who I would always talk to right from 2017 up up until 2019 on the phone and when we became in person in Chicago at the time I couldn't stand her <laughs> I didn't realize how much I had changed individually and this girl was just stressing me out so I had to communicate that with her and let her know that this you're wanting to be upbeat is giving me anxiety <laughs> Come on, so calm down, calm down exactly, thank you <laughs> we're not always on fire <laughs> So that's something I've realized that you have to keep in mind that someone you've just never been in person with for a long time, that's an adaptation you're also going to experience as well. So it's just keeping an open mind to communicate. And even when you are uncomfortable or when they upset you, you just have to learn how to speak that to them so that that way they are aware of how to how you want to be loved and how you also would love them as well. Thank you for that. Yes. Um, all right, and then we'll go into our next question for today. Um, so uh, this is more of um, your time to shine with sharing any advice you have for people seeking those long-term relationships or just um, maneuvering around it. So um, to someone seeking a long-term relationship or friendship in medicine, what is one piece of advice you would like to share to them? Oh, it's my turn to go, okay. First things first is to try to have friends that are outside of medicine, honestly, because I know that it's difficult to find those type of friendship, especially after undergrad and you enter med school and medicine is all that is about you. But it's important to be able to have friends outside of medicine so that that way you're still a whole human being who can have communication and conversations that is just not medically related. I, I don't know, everybody's different, for, but for me, I can't stand just talking about medicine. It drives me insane. <laughs> and so it's important to keep that in mind, to have a diverse community of friends that you have whether it's age group, whether it's profession, because you're able to learn just different life experiences from different people. Um, when it comes to long-term relationship and friendships, I really, in medicine, I think it really does depend on the individual because I've had friends that I'm, I've been friends with. I have a friend that I've known since like the 10th grade and another one I've known since 2014. So it's almost 10 years, 12 years, and some longer. Um, I would say that it's been different in different seasons. There were times that we spoke more and there were times that we really didn't talk. So it really does depend on the person, how much that friendship means to you for you to be able to keep on with that friendship. Because even when the times change, you still have to be able to communicate, still have to be able to check in on that person. So um. I don't know, maybe it's also the type of person that I am who just, you know, knows how to keep up with people and text them randomly and send them ridiculous voice notes. So I, honestly, I think just really try your best and, you know, see how it goes. But at the same time, don't really beat yourself up if you don't have long term friendships just yet, because, again, you're growing, you're evolving. Things might change down the line. So it's a hard navigation to figure out. It definitely it definitely takes some skill i'll start again romantic and then i'll go friend aka platonic uh romantic i think number one if you're seeking a long-term relationship set expectations early the medical journey is three different phases right med school is one phase residency is a different phase attending is another phase um a lot of people i think love the idea of dating a doctor bringing home a doctor landing a doctor but you know when they are next to you shooting in that gym uh they're gonna feel it being a lot different so that's one thing you kind of tell them like hey you know i really like you i think this can go somewhere but just know I'm, right now i'm a second year i'm gonna have step one next year then i'm gonna have step two after that i may have to go away for three months for some rotations um and then i have match day but after i match me and you we're gonna go to another place and then be together for three years, then have to go somewhere after that. So you definitely have to like balance that expectation. 
And then with friendships, one thing I would definitely say that you need to do, um, I do like the idea of having different friends for different seasons. Like, you need water now. Hold on one second. All right. So then you tell them like, all right, you do have your lawyer friend, your med school friend, your pharmacy friend. Those are all really cool. Um, and then, but you have to make sure when you have that group, everyone's going to bounce ideas off of you. Like, hey, you're the doctor. My throat is sore. Uh, what's going on? But then this is Joseph, by the way. Then you balance back to them. Like, hey, you're the lawyer. Can I get sued for this? How am I going to get through this? Um, and that's where a good friend group goes well. Okay. Um, but the other thing you have to make sure is that they all understand, uh, again, your time frame. So with the friend group, I think that does pretty well uh, when it's diversified. Um, and I like that piece of advice. And I'm, now I'm being tasked to go get water. <laughs> I was going to add that to what you said about having um, different friends for different things. That's something that I had to learn as well, because I think sometimes we have the unrealistic expectation that one person has to be everything for us. So they have to be the person that you're talking to about everything. And it doesn't really have to be that way. You can have different friends for different things. So you can have a friend where you're going for relationship advice or a friend where you're going for financial advice so that that way there's less pressure for you to put on one person to fulfill all of your needs, especially when they are not able to. Yes, that is great advice. Thank you for that. All right. Um, uh, we do have one more question. And then after that, we would like to open the floor to any of our audience members who would like to ask questions. And then we will end off around um, uh, near the end of the hour. All right. So um, uh, since you're here, um, we would like to have you start us off again. So what are some resources you have used to foster and manage friendships and relationships? Like how did you use social media? If you use counseling or any other resources um, to manage that? Um, I think for me, I always start off with asking myself, what type of person do I want to be and what type of people do I want to be surrounded by? So I'm a very firm believer on surrounding yourself with people who have the life that you're looking for. But at the same time, whatever you're looking for in someone else, you have to ask yourself if you have those same qualities as well. So that that way you, even if you're able to, to receive from the person, you're also able to give that same thing as well. So I've really invested in therapy because <laughs> this life is crazy. <laughs> So therapy is very much needed. I would advise anyone to just try therapy. I know some people are very particular about it, especially depending on what they believe in, but it truly just helps you recognize what your traumas are or the things that are just you're struggling with and how to be able to address that. And one thing I've realized is that friendship is really a great place to experience healing. Um, I know some people look for more romantic relationships for them to be able to experience that healing, but people do underestimate the power of friendships. Friendships have really, at least for me, they've really been a source of healing for me in terms of working through a lot of issues that I had and learning how to communicate with my friends. So I would say that social media for sure, because some friends are on WhatsApp, some are on Instagram, some are in one and not in the other. So you have to now try to figure out which one the other person uses. Um, and also reading books as well, for sure. I know I've read the five love languages and I would just ask random, you know, my friends, what is your love language? So that that way I'm able to understand them better. Talk ask questions even if it sounds weird or random but you just you can never know someone unless you know they share their life with you so i would say that and a lot of like i already said reading a lot of books to for your self-development really helps you out as well ironically i think my favorite resource is social media i think all my friends know like i'm not the guy that's going to text you randomly on a wednesday if we're not in a chat group and just be like how are you doing? I don't know why, but I am the guy that is going to jazz you up on every post, every story, every every snap that you put. I'm going to be the guy with all the reactions, fire emoji, hand clap emojis. Uh, I have a rule. If I see you working out in the gym on your stories, I always give you a hand clap, right? Because what's the hardest thing to do? Go to the gym. So some people may know like, you know, like, hey, I'm not going to know everything about your life, but it, I follow you enough from what you give everyone that when we are in the same room, I'm going to start from there. Hey, I saw you in the gym lately. How's the gym going out? Oh, great. You know, three months ago, I saw you were in Cabo. How'd that trip go? Um, and I do know social media is a very uh, superficial 
view of people's life. Um, but all conversations usually start superficial and then you go deep. Once people get comfortable with you, then it's like, okay, we can go deeper than that. Um, so I think most of my friends know social media is number one. Um, number two, I am again, the guy who will respond in all of the group chats. Like I'm instantaneous 24 hours. Um, I will respond. I will react. I will do something. Um, and that's because I think those are simple conversations to keep going. Uh, I think a good meme goes a very long way. Um, you know, just sometimes it just tells you a story. My favorite is the dog sitting in fire. Like, this is fine. If I'm at work and I send that to you, just know I'm not fine. Work is terrible. Um, those are one of my favorites. Um, my second favorite is the Drake let's go. Like whenever my friend sends something like, Hey, I got this job. Let's go is my favorite. Um, and that just goes a long way, right? You know, pictures work worth a thousand words. Um, and sometimes you just need places to dump suddenly. Um, and you know, your partner may not be around you and like, you may have this best friend, um, but they're not, they may not respond in five minutes. That's the one solid about a group chat is usually somebody may respond back when you just need to say traffic sucks. My job sucks. I can't believe this, et cetera, et cetera. You're potty training kids and you need to like have an outlet. Uh, that's where that comes in. I probably should read more books as well. Um, but time. <laughs> Audio books are lifesavers because that way you can just play it in the background as you're doing the dishes or driving. Yeah. See, everyone says that. And I think I got locked into podcasts. So now I'm like on this medicine yes. podcast. I'm on this yeah. sports podcast. It's only 24 hours in a day. <laughs> I actually tried the podcast. I will say for um, audio books, it just really depends on who's reading the book because like sometimes... If I want to hear that voice for a good hour, it has to be like one that I can just like feel smooth with the rest of the time. <laughs> yes. Oh, and um, I really want to add, um, Dr. Yanni, going back to your memes, I tried to make it a goal um, in the past that I would post a meme in any of my friends' group chats every day. And I would just try to find something online or something cool. Sometimes it's from another group chat and I share with the other friend, with, <laughs> like making it look like it's mine. <laughs> And then I remember there were just a lot of great times where people reacted to it. Like, um, oh God, there was this fun one a friend shared with me. It was like, um, you know, the spine, um, the C4 vertebral disc, it looks like a small smiley face if you look at it from above. It was such a nice, nice little meme that I, I got from a pre-med friend. And it was a really funny meme that just made everyone's day. They'll always make you laugh. Like for the beginning of January, a Cat Williams meme went a long way. You know, like I saw all of those. Um, today, all my memes have been Nigerian related. And unfortunately, <laughs> at the uh, pity of South Africa, stealing I'm a piano memes, having uh, <laughs> Evan Tyler dance in a Nigerian jersey. One guy is sitting with three different foods and it's like me eating <laughs> Ghanaian jollof while listening to I'm a piano. <laughs> while it's like, it's just, again, memes are great. It's the fact that they are taking the insult so personal that even cracked me up. <laughs> We're going hard. <laughs> we just took today to blow up the whole internet. I love it. Sorry, South Africans, if you're watching. We're still friends. We're still buddy. One continent. Just today, you got to take this L. Oh, oh and um, I actually found the meme again. So, um, OK, it's actually the C6 vertebrae. So to make you guys feel better um, today, um, just whenever you feel like you're upset, just remember that the vertebrae C6 is a smiley face and how happy it is to support you every day. All right. I'm glad that you two were able to listen to me for that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, you guys. So now we will go into um, our audience now. So um, our audience can share any questions they like in the chat and our panelists can just answer away as they like. All right, so um, we'll give that space to people here now. Um, if not, um, uh, you can also feel free to share any other um, details or advice you would like um, uh, that you may not have um, shared yet. I was gonna say group calls are always easy as well, so that that way everyone is talking at the same time and somebody's like, oh, I haven't heard from you or seen you in a long time. That's always pretty fun to always do every once in a while. I enjoy a good group call. Just make sure your network is strong. That that laggy person on the call, I get to keep them on mute permanently. Like, sorry. <laughs> um, another thing to throw out there, yeah, I, I like to call out elephants in rooms. Again, people talk about relationships. Um, some relationships will end. We touched on that a little bit. Um, again, for that romantic piece, 
don't hide behind medicine, in my opinion. That's petty. They'll be like, oh, I was studying, so I didn't call you back for three months. Okay, we know. If you just want to break up with someone, do it the adult way. You know, go to a coffee shop or whatever, whatever. Hey, this isn't working. Um, you don't have to blame the medicine if you don't like the person. You just don't like the person anymore. And I've seen that way too often. People blame the medicine. I was going to say, it's not even just medicine. It's the statement of people claiming that they are busy. And I'm like, we're all busy, so mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense. Even if you are busy, at least say, okay, come, when is your availability? So that that way you're taking the initiative of telling the person that, hey, I may not have the time right now, but when are you available for us to actually chat? But I hate when people tell me I'm busy. I'm like, I'm also busy. <laughs> exactly. And, and that's the problem when you're not direct. Everyone will then just present you other options. So if you don't want to do something, just say, I don't want to do it. It's yes. like, oh, no, I'm busy on Tuesday. Then you, the next answer to me, what about Wednesday or Thursday? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So just say, I don't want to go out with you. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, and just, you know, and you'll be, you'll lose a couple friends, but you won't be weighing down your life because bad friendships could also hurt and harm you, right? It takes up your mental space, dealing with other people's tragedies and everything else like that, dealing with other people's concerns. Um, mm -hmm. So you want to make sure as you're balancing your life that uh, other people aren't bringing you all the way down. Also, nothing's going to change your relationship flow of life more than kids. I'm just throwing that out there right now. I know most people listening don't have kids. Um, it is a myth that kids and medicine don't mix. I've seen people have kids in med school, residency, fellowship, and as attendings. When you have them, you have them. You will balance. But like, what makes kids hard is for you know the first 10 years, they're going to dominate most of your hours. So you have to do what they say, even when they run up to you like this. I tutor and I work with kids and I kid you not. The moment I started working with kids, I never have baby fever. People send me like cute videos of babies and I I, I feel nothing because <laughs> I know I'm going to come on the call and a four-year-old child, a fourth grade child is going to piss me off. <laughs> Just yelling and crying. And like, I have now learned that they can cry on demand and they know they can. So the minute you give them what they want, they just stop crying. Um but they're cute and everyone finds them cute. So they get away with literally everything they want. Okay. I feel like they're cute until they misbehave. That cuteness clears from my eye. <laughs> I definitely agree. Do you have any other questions for us, Tyron? Um, I can probably come up with one. Uh, yes. So, okay. Um, uh, with just, um, I'm, I'm sorry, this is more of a t technological topic because I've been looking more into um, some informatics topics recently. So um, ever since um, there have been more convenient ways to meet with other friends or um, partners online, especially um, not long-term, long distance relationships. Um, how would you say um, just uh, using or learning how to use social media or technology in general been an experience with helping manage those relationships and friendships? I think that's important to like quantify. So as one of the old heads on this call, I remember watching my mother like deal with friendships, right? So we're talking late nineties, right? She had a phone book. It literally was a phone book. She had to write down your number. If you changed your number and didn't call her, you guys are no longer talking like ever, ever again, right? There was no like, oh, I saw you post this and I commented on your page. That was it. If I didn't see you in person or talk with you on the phone, the relationship was dying. And that's where some people feel like our brain connections should max out on. Like the number of people you can juggle their phone number. Nowadays, with technology, you hit it on the head. We can keep up with two, 300 people for 20, 30 years, knowing full well that back in the day, they would have fallen by the web, the wayside. Um, the way I remind myself of this is I assign tiers to my friendship, right? I joke and think of it like an electron or a proton or something. I have my nucleus, right? Five, six, seven friends who are never going to go anywhere. Any My day, they're not just going 90% of the time. They're always going to find me, um, you know, those are your groomsmaids, your, your bridesmaids, you know, the siblings or whatever. Those, those are your internal nucleus. Then you have your first ring of people who, um, you know, they get your Christmas card. You may not call them every day, but you like keep up with them. 
Then you have your next ring where like, oh, you know, you're my Facebook poke buddy or, you know, clap on reaction. And then you have the other group that you just like, oh, yeah, when you're scrolling through Facebook, you see them and you keep going. But just remind yourself that you're not obliged to treat a third outer ring person like your nucleus just because you use the word friend. Um, if they call you and say, I need $20, you can say no. Like, I, I, all I do is wish you happy birthday once a year. I'm not giving you any money. Um, but, you know, the other friend is your nucleus. You can uh, log into their daughter's uh, popcorn sale and buy out the whole store. Me and a group of friends did that. It was actually quite awesome. <laughs> um, but those are things you do for your closer friends. So technology is great. We can keep up with people better. Technology is not going to organize those people for you. You must do that yourself or you're overwhelming yourself. I was going to add and say that it's funny how technology makes it easy, but I feel as if it also makes it a little bit hard because it feels like a lot of people are not really wanting to connect anymore because the moment you say something that, I don't know, rubs them the wrong way, they just would want to cut you off just like that. <laughs> so it's like people are not even making the effort to communicate, hey, you said this and it pissed me off. They're just going the easy route of, oh, hashtag my mental health or self-care <laughs> and then tomorrow they'll wake up and they have no friends and they wonder oh why am i depressed or why am i alone i don't know maybe you should have told your friend that what they did was not didn't didn't wasn't helpful for you so i would say that i don't know people are really they find it very hard to communicate these days and wanting to make the time to connect and i think a lot of people expect the other person to want to make the to initiate the conversation or initiate certain things and they also are not doing the same thing as well so i i don't know i find it sometimes very a challenge connecting with people every now and then or at least when you connect with them keeping up with them because you hear from them today and you never hear from them for the longest time no you hit on something big right like society <laughs> is shifted right like when you were in an argument with someone and it was private it's only when you were in the same room and they see you guys not shake hands it's like oh they're not talking now, mm -hmm. if the minute someone unfollows somebody, it's a story, right? Like, I'll go yeah. back to sports. A player unfollows the team that they're on. All of a sudden, they're leaving. They're no longer with the team. They hate the whole team. And I'm just like, maybe they hit unfollow? Like, maybe it's Lent and they don't want to, like, keep up with that? Like, you don't know what's going on. Um, so I think it's a whole nother realm of expectations to set for friendships, right? Like, I've been hit up before. You didn't wish me happy birthday on your IG story. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I did not know those are a requirement to be a friend with someone. Um, so that's that. Uh, that's very difficult. Yes, nowadays, I actually want to throw this in. There are some new coin terms like you're left on red, you are ghosted, you are unfollowed. And yes, it's just like there are these new terms that it's much different communicating with people, like you said. Um, yeah. Uh, no, sorry, go on. Oh, um, I was gonna say Dr. Anthony again. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was gonna say that um the one that surprised me are the ones that read your messages and don't respond and the blue tick is on. <laughs> oh uh, yes, yes. I know you're talking oh, about message, it shows red. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um I also had another question that popped up in my head. Um okay. it's more of um the reverse role of friendships and relationships in medicine. Um so um, while medicine also impacts how you spend time or um, manage your relationships and friendships, um, arguably the same thing can be said um, the other way around, like um, how um, friendships or relationships may affect um, how you work in medicine or like um, just um, uh, if anything significant happened that might affect how you um, work or perform. So I'm just curious um, uh, if you are able to answer what are um, some ways where you have um, experienced how relationships and friendships impacted your medical career and how did you adapt to that? I'll say a good version. So like the way friendships have impacted my medical career thus far have all been good. Because um, the one good thing about having friends who like you and keep up with you and keep up with they're saying your name in rooms where you're not present. So I've had seeing opportunities, uh, job opportunities, 
uh, mentorship opportunities be brought to me just because one of my good friends or a friend, you know, I, again, I keep up with, you get that meme once a week or something. It's like, oh yeah, I know an emergency medicine doc in Nashville or, oh yeah, I know someone who'd be a great speaker for this. And they're saying my name in places. So um, keeping up with the or networking as probably the fancy people would love to say, um, that's a good way a relationship can really benefit your medical career. I was gonna say in, this, um, in the aspect of your support system, because when you're preparing for steps and you start with you world, <laughs> you world is um, low key traumatic. <laughs> you think you know it's high key, high high key traumatic, life. high key. It is. There was one time I took a test, I almost passed out in the library. My sister was laughing. I told her, no joke, I saw my life flash before my eyes. <laughs> So it's in, it's in situations like that, you're able to rant, especially to your friends in medicine, where you're, you know, ranting to them about your experience and they, you think your own is crazy. Someone tells you a crazy experience, so you're comforted, but they're able to encourage you and let you know that, you know, you're not alone. We are also going through what we're going through, what you're going through as well. So I would say it's a very um, beneficial aspect being your support system in that aspect for those in medicine. For those that are outside of medicine, I guess they see that, you know, medicine is very prestigious and they want to ensure that you you don't give up and especially having a Nigerian background <laughs> and they say you know Nigerian they carry last so you don't have much of a choice to just quit you can't quit because you know your parents are not going to let you quit so you have to just persevere till the end so friendship is super needed when it comes to support system you don't have to be an island you just have to text someone saying hey i feel like i'm losing my mind i have so many exams i've taken this test and i'm not doing well you know and then someone is able to encourage you and just let you know that you're not alone and that friend circle if you guys if you diversified it like you said earlier maybe you have the future pastor in your group who will be praying for you you know like one time i need i need to pray pastor or whatever they'll pray for you um hello everybody this is jacob this is the second one this is the twin of joseph jacob um, has said that he, his brother will not shine in without him exactly <laughs> yes <laughs> hi jacob <laughs> um hopefully you have that friend who's a chef who you can hit up for some rice and stew um hopefully you have that other friend again he was the fun one who'll take you to the club and get your mind off of it um, and again, hopefully you have that smart friend who will tell you why doxycycline wasn't the wrong answer. It's because the patient was pregnant and it wouldn't affect the baby. So the right answer should have been amoxicillin. And, you know, so when you have that diversity of friend group, those are the ones you can tap in into the seasons for when you need them. Yes, thank you for that. Um, let's see, I guess. Sorry, I'm I'm running out of creativity right now. <laughs> it's getting late. <laughs> You're fine. Um, I guess I, I feel like I have a question for Doctor Amani um, Anani. In terms of being married or even before marriage, how did you know when things were the right time for you? Right time mm. to have the right time to get married. Because sometimes we want to just wait for the right moment and it's never a right moment. So how were you able to figure that out? So I'll start with the, the phases you said. For dating, um, some of my friends would say I'm a serial monogamous, which I, you know, I don't shun that phrase, but I don't think I always need somebody. But I feel like when you have someone close to you, life was easier, right? So again, I uh, met my now wife in med school. Uh, her name is Uche. And it was just like, things were easier with Uche around, right? So it was like, okay, let's, you know, let's date. You know, on my off days, I don't want to only play Call of Duty, even though that's still was fun on some off days. So that was the first step there, right? I realized this person is making my life, at least in this season, better. So then I was like, it's worth attaching my wagon to her right now. I like to tell everyone, everyone always wants to know, like, when did you know that um, you wanted to marry her? For me, you know, I would like to pretend that the the voice of the Lord is louder in my life. It can be loud sometimes. Um, and I think when I realized it was I actually, and I'll tell the story all the time, I did not pass step one, right? So the first time. Um, so obviously we're in the same class together. And in most schools, you have to pass step one to go to the next level. So now I now we're both faced with this. We may not graduate together. I may be a year ahead of you. We may not match together. 
And I'm thinking, all right, she's going to peace out, right? Now we're in a phase where relationship is not going to be conducive or easier for both of us. But she was around all the time. You know, hey, you haven't eaten. Here's here's rice. I'm going to be in the living room. If you want to ask me some questions in a step, I'll be here. Let me fill you in on what we did in class, you know, even though it's a year ahead of you when you're gone. And to me, that's when I realized, you know, as we jokingly say, okay, that's wifey material. So that I knew that could be my wife right then and there. But then... The next phase of the question you ask is when do you then, you know, hitch that wagon? I feel like, you know, relationships are supposed to be equally yoked. And I felt, at least in that situation, she was fully where I wanted my wife to be. But I didn't feel like I was fully there as where a good enough husband for her, I guess, for lack of better words. So for me, my mandatory thing was we got to graduate med school. Um, if I don't graduate med school, I'm not good enough for you. So no ring until after graduation, even though I knew probably around second year year, third year, this was going to be the one. Uh, then we matched, the couples matched, got married, and K. Sarah and Joseph and Jacob. Uh, for everyone else, that's going to be different, right? I had a four-year cycle. One thing I realized in this season of my life is all my friends' relationships go way faster. you got like one year once you go past 30 to realize if you want to marry somebody or not, or you're wasting their time. Um, so I don't want to, I don't like to believe it's that easy, um, but you should definitely ask yourself the question, even at a young age, is this person making this season better? I'm not saying you have to marry them, but if you're dating someone and they're not making anatomy and physiology easier for your life, then they're just holding you back. So as they make each stage easier, once you get to a certain phase, you realize, huh, there's been three, four stages in a row. This person's made my life easier. They'll probably make my future life easier as well. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so I actually had an interesting question about just, um, uh, yes, just kind of figuring out when to hitch that wagon again. Cause, um, uh, yes, I'm actually curious cause, um, many of us, um, are in our late twenties, I'm assuming. And, um, Dr. Nani, you're, you're much ahead of us, but I would still love to hear more about that area. Um, so, uh, yes. Um, uh, if you feel comfortable sharing, um, uh, at what age did you marry Uche? It was, I believe. Yeah, no, no, that, that, that's a that's a fair question. So Uche and I got married in 2013. So I was born 86. I have to do the math like all the time. Like get to that point in your life where like you need math all the time. Um, so I was 27. Yeah, 27 when we got married. Um, and she's a year younger than me. So she's 20. She was 26. But the ages were young, but the status in life made sense, right? We had just did four years of med school as dating, and we got married after the first year of residency. At that point, you can only shock up for so long before people start, you know, making googly eyes in the village. What's going on? So at that point, it's like, all right, you got to get married. But again, most people aren't blessed with that time frame, right? Like if you start dating someone, let's say in your third year of med school, Again, you got one year now to figure out, is this someone I can go that next step with to residency? Especially if you go different places. Now we're talking long term, WhatsApp, Zoom calls at night, FaceTimes at night. That's a whole different balancing act. Um, and if you're on the other side, like you're, oh, I've just been reminded that uh, Uche was 25 technically. She reminded me via text. Shout out to Uche. Um, that you get reminded uh, in different phases uh, where you are, right? So. If you're 32, right, and you're in your third year of residency, you know, if you want a Joseph and Jacob, you might want to be married by 34. I'm not saying you rush anything, um, but now instead of just going to the movies and eating large, you know, bowls of popcorn and falling asleep to Hulu, you start making more serious, you start asking more serious questions, excuse me, as you're dating, right? I don't think we had the, uh, you know, how many kids do you want conversation until probably like six, seven months after dating versus nowadays, you know, at 20, 27, 28, 29, 30, that how many kids do you want? It's probably date number seven. Like it is, it is way different timeline. So yeah, up. <laughs> she's in number two. I have to date two. I have to know. Oh, one second. I have to yell like a dad. Kids will climb anything. Um, so that's what you have to know. I, I think it's fair to do things 
at different speeds and different stages of your life. That's what I'm trying to like behold. So to everyone listening, you can't say, oh, you have to date someone for four years before you can marry them. If you're 21, yeah, that's great advice. You're 21. You can barely drink. You just you even know your credit score at that age. When you're 31, yeah, after four months, uh, you should be like meeting family by that standpoint. Um, versus, you know, when you date in college, you can probably go a year or two before you meet each other's parents. So it's just a balance. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that balance. Okay, it is almost the end of the hour, so um, we will wrap this up with um, just having you to share um, any last words of wisdom, uh, pieces of advice, solutions to, to world peace, anything you would like before the session ends. So yes, um, uh, before um, the session ends, um, just have at it and share anything you'd like to anyone watching this live stream today. Favor, oh yeah, wrap up. <laughs> no, I was just going to say for the single people out there like myself, dating is it's a challenge, honestly, because people have very weird expectations, weird mentalities, and it's a mess. But honestly, I would encourage everyone, just like myself as well, to stay true to who you are and your values and be able to communicate that as well, even in your friendships. If you want someone, if you want to hear from someone, um, often you just have to let them know and not be afraid to put your needs because i think some of us we get nervous and we don't want to seem too needy but a real friend and someone that is meant for you even like a true friend would not necessarily make you feel that way and if they do then i guess they're not the person for you but it's important and it's okay to just be able to communicate how you feel and whatever you need in someone i'm gonna hype on that train Romantic or platonic, I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier, nothing beats direct communication, you know, unfollowing subliminal things, you know, changing your mood status, whatever, that is all subliminal, no one can read minds, you want to hit it and hit it hard. Um, you don't have to be mean about it, you can always come from like, this is how I'm feeling, um, and say what your expectations are. I'm feeling like this, but I want to continue with you, how can we make it better? Or I'm feeling like this, and I just don't see it getting better, you know, just be very, very uh, direct. Um, again, social media, great for platonic friendships. It makes non-platonic friendships messy because then you break up. Then do you scrub the photos? Do you not scrub the photos? There's like a whole different standard for dating nowadays than there was, you know, back in the day. You could just throw the photos in a, you know, trash can, light it on fire. But now everyone knows that you deleted so-and-so's picture or like blurred out their face. So again, social media is good and bad at the same time um dating is going at warp speed now you have apps that you can just swipe left and right and like link up with someone right away and say what you like versus bumping into each other at the library and having a conversation so as things change speed you know change your speed and expectations as well and then just continue to set them up front and hopefully your relationships last a long time all right thank you so much favor and dr anani it was great having you here today and I actually took some notes on the side a few minutes ago. But, so I'm very <laughs> grateful for that advice as well. And yes, and um, if you would like to, um, oh, actually, um, you've already shared your Instagram tags today. So um, if you'd like to share any contact information besides that, you may feel free to do so if um, anyone from SNMA would like to contact you at a later time. Why do we drop our emails? Should we put it in the chat? Um, oh, yes, you can put it in the chat. And um, if anyone asks, we can share. Okay, that's fine. It was really great. Thank you so much for having us, and it was really fun having you, Doctor An Anani, right? <laughs> yes, Anani. Yes, it was nice yeah. to have you too as well. I think this is what SMA needed. They needed the uh, breadth of experience from a fourth year all the way to an attending, or much older, as Tan said, which is true. I have age on a lot of people watching this, um, but thus comes wisdom yeah uh i put my email in the chat to the directors they can send it to anyone watching this yeah um, I'm gonna do there's my instagram yep there's my instagram i respond all dms i will be at snma all four days as pbm to the ec so if you find me like hey i watched the sewing seeds uh let's communicate and we can exchange linkedin's or whatever all right sounds good thank you you too and have a good rest of your night as well Thank you. Have a good rest of your week. Bye. Thank you. Yes. Oh, yes. And have fun with Jacob. <laughs>